Hey, g'day people, it's Matt here from Matt Carves. So today I'm gonna to carve this and I'm gonna give you a sort of like a step-by-step -step kind of um, way to do it. I'm also gonna show you a little bit more in detail on how to get those really nice kind of like material effects on the hat, how to carve those so it looks like material. So let's get into it. Uh, this is how to carve a little gnome fridge magnet. And so what we're carving in macro carpet today and the width of it is around 41 millimeters and in that in inches is 1.6 inches not used to using inches okay and it's 98 millimeters or 3.8 inches in length and it's about 0.9 of an inch in depth so i'm just finding the middle there do it any way you want so there you go, and that's where the nose is going to be. So pretty much you could make this any size and you just stick the nose in the middle. And you can use one of these fancy rulers if you're no good at drawing circles. I'm just guessing what the uh, nose should be. So I'm drawing it in here in a very light pencil and then I'll go over it with a darker pencil. You kind of want the hat to have a little bit of character. So I sort of like have it flopping over to one side and sort of over the nose sort of have it rounded as though the nose is sort of holding up the hat. And I'm just drawing in the moustache that comes off the actual nose and the beard that comes down from that. So I'll just go over it with a darker pencil that I'm happy with it so I can see it when I'm cutting it out. There you go. Now I'm not really happy with that moustache so I decided to do sort of pointy ones like that. Now you can carve all of it out but I have got a scroll saw and I'm just changing the blades there. This is a pinless scroll saw which means it doesn't have pins at either end of the blades. It's just held in by a sort of like a clamp system. And I'll actually show you, I'll do some of it on the scroll saw and some of it on the band saw. Um, my favorite probably tool for power carving is probably the band saw because you can do much more on it. But if you were doing really small carvings all the time, you'd probably use the scroll saw. So there you go. That is the scroll saw. And the thing is with the scroll saw, you've got to keep continual pressure on the piece or it sort of will pull up because the blade goes up and down whereas on the band saw it just goes down so you don't really have to hold the piece down and for those real sharp kind of areas like that I tend to just sort of like go out of the wood and then go in and with a scroll saw you can go, you should go backwards in the wood quite easily whereas on a band saw you can't because then you have the risk of pulling off the blade off the band saw I'll just take this last piece off here and then I'll show you that last bit on the bandsaw. See how I'm going backwards there? It's really hard to do that on a... You have to be very careful on the bandsaw doing that. Okay, so there you go. There's just a comparison with the scroll saw blade and the bandsaw blade. And that bandsaw blade is actually quite small. So there you go, I can just let go of the piece of wood and it'll just stay there because it's just pushing it down. Now you're not going to be able to go around all the curves with the bandsaw, you can sort of uh, go back and forwards if you wanted to. So here I'm going to take it backwards but you have to be very careful because it will pull it off the wheels in the bandsaw. So there you see I'm just sort of like cutting in so I can get rid of that piece and then I'll go in at a different angle. And with band saws you want to be very very careful uh, because that blade is running pretty fast and will um, probably take your thumb off if you I think the problems occur if you're putting too much pressure on the wood and then it goes through and your thumb is behind it so you often see I will use a push stick I probably didn't have to then but I just kind of feel like it's a little bit safer and I'm never putting a lot of pressure on the wood as well. It's sort of just sort of letting the blade do the work itself. And just really thinking about what you're doing. That's the thing with all tools is you've got to be focused. 
So you can sort of see there um, the finish of both. The scroll saw is always going to be a nicer finish. On that side you can sort of see that is the band saw, so it's got lots of lines there. Now I'm just drawing the profile of the hat. So next we will go in and we'll just carve that profile down. And so we, then we're sort of starting to get into the 3D aspect of it all. So I'm just using the Cutsall Flame Burr there. Now, I am an affiliate with Cutsall. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I only have like an affiliate link with Cutsall and I've got an Amazon uh, links as well, which gives me roundabout. I get probably from Amazon, I get like $15 a month if I'm lucky. And um, Cutsall is a, bit, a little bit better than that. They um, really help, help you out, Cutsall does. So if you wanted to buy a cut saws, um, just go through that link and what happens is you get 5% off and I get a percentage of what you spend. So there I'm just using the cut saw fine taper burr. So these are my actual two favourite burrs is the cut saw extreme flame and the cut saw fine taper burr. You can pretty much do most things with those two burrs actually. So I'm just like going around the nose. Now you kind of want the nose to be the most prominent. So you kind of want to take the hat above the nose back a little bit as well. So the nose kind of sticks out from the hat. And you sort of want to go around the nose to start off with. And then you can sort of make it rounder once you've taken away that material. And what I am carving with there is an inverted cone burr. They are diamond burrs and I did a review of them uh, previously and I will leave a link up there in the top right hand corner to them. And they're quite cheap burrs off Amazon and I think they're really really good. They are a really unique shape and they come in all different sizes. So I'm just sort of like going around the nose like that. It's a perfect size for that. And then I can actually shape the nose as well. Now if you don't have one of these it becomes a little bit trickier. But you just sort of like have to plane the nose down with a flatter burr. And uh, just be sort of like uh, go very gradually I guess you'd say. So you can sort of see there I'm sort of like trying to use it sort of like in a rounding it off to start off with. Hard to explain that motion. Sort of gradually going working in towards the middle sort of using the cup on the um, face of the burr to make that nose round. They are, I, I really rate these burrs actually. Not because they're really high quality but because mainly of the shape of them. Now you, they, they work really well in softer woods uh, and harder woods they're, they're going to struggle. Okay so now it is back to the Cutsall Flame Burr. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking the hat further back. Uh, carving's a lot about sort of like um, reacting to what you've just done. So I've put the nose in and I know where that nose is going to go and how far it's going to stick out. So now I can work on the hat again and refine the shape so it looks like it's kind of like going over the nose. So you kind of want it to sort of like... Um, Oh, what's the word for it sort of like looks like it's coming down onto the nose so I'm just sort of working it back a little bit there it's yeah it's a real game of just taking things back slowly and having a look you can sort of see there on the side profile that it looks sort of like like it's flowing over the nose and I'm using a finer taper burr there just to sort of like hone things down a little bit more. Now the hat, it looks a little bit weird because it's got that sort of corner in there. So you kind of want it flowing out from the top of the nose out to the edges. So I've just penciled in where they will go. And we'll take all of that kind of stuff back now. Try and get rid of that. And it's the same with the moustache and the beard. What you want to do is you want to go in and give them general kind of shapes and sort of then start reacting off one another. See how the moustache relates to the nose and the beard relates to the moustache. 
all those kind of like little details that you want to do before you start going in and putting in the finer details. Now I was using a, uh, what was it, the Cuts All Fine Taper Burr before. Now I'm just going to show you, you can actually use cutter burrs. The problem with cutter burrs, uh, probably for a beginner, is if you um, sort of like put too much pressure in the wrong part, it will take a massive chunk out. So I'm going to put in um, the back of the moustache there. I'm not quite sure what to do with the head um, behind the moustache, but we'll just leave that for now and something will sort itself out. So you can use that taper burr again to sort of go under the hat and start forming that undercut that makes that hat look like it's actually made out of material that is quite skinny. So you can sort of gradually go along there and then sort of like work the bulk of the material out. Okay, so let's put in a mouth here so you can sort of see the uh, just underneath the moustache. What we can do is sort of like estimate where the bottom lip is going to be and take material away from underneath that bottom lip and it will automatically just look like a mouth then. Now I'm going to just do that now but later on I'm going to refine that. Uh, we might lose the detail in it, I'm not quite sure at the moment. Okay, so let's put some lines in the material. So I tend to go in with like a, um, a sharp edged burr. It doesn't need to necessarily be that one. And I just go in and because the hat is folding over on itself, the material is going to be bunched up. So I'm just putting in where I think the lines are going to be. And what we're going to do next is to make those lines look less like cuts like that. We're going to round off those edges so they look more like these cuts right here. So you can sort of see the difference between the two, that lower one and those upper two, they look really kind of roundish. And to do this I'm using Master Carver's Cone Burr to do this. This is a diamond burr rated at 150 grit. So I'm sort of, you can sort of see me there, I'm sort of going in and just rounding off those edges. You can actually use the tip of this burr to put in sort of like a gradual line out of that cut as well. It's uh, really handy this burr because you can sort of use the wider area to round off areas and the narrower part to actually put in little details as well. Yeah, I'm definitely no expert in carving material. Uh, I just kind of make things up as I go along, as we all do. Um, if, if you wanted to become really good, you would probably get a bit of material and look at it and then carve directly from that uh, as a reference. But I'm just making this up from my imagination on what I kind of think it should look like. And I put the general shapes in there with the inverted cone burr, but now we've moved to the just a T-shaped burr, and you can sort of see me sort of like flipping it upside down because I, what I like to do is I like to go in and sort of like use this burr on sort of like different angles. So each kind of line that goes down, it kind of forms a sort of a V shape, if you get what I mean. There's no kind of flat areas on the top surfaces. And you can really sort of like use the top of that burr to, to take away any fuzzy bits and just refine the shape of those little valleys. And here I'm just showing you, I'm just playing around with the material again, and I'm just using a Dremel wheel point bird. Now you don't have to do this. Um, I'm just showing you that you can use all different kinds of birds for different jobs. I'm just sort of like playing around here. You can actually put in little indentations with it. It's a really nice bird. I will leave a link up in the top right hand 
corner for the, a review on that burr and how to use it as well. Now I'm going to use that wheel point bird to put in the mouth. So what I want to do is I want to kind of put it in a hole where the actual hole of the mouth is. Um, so I will just sort of like figure out where that is and then push it in a little bit. You don't have to go too, too deep. And that looks pretty good. Now I might round off that lip a little bit just so it looks a little bit more natural like a lip. And then there you go. Presto, it's done. Now I'm just dabbing on some uh, blue wood dye from Brewax. Problem with this stuff is it sort of like diffuses through the wood so you have to be very careful. Don't want to get any on that nose. So I'm just sort of like lightly going on the edges there. And I did give uh, this wood little little gnomey dude a light sand with some hand sandpaper before I started this. I, did, I think I went over with a diamond burr as well, just quickly. I didn't spend too much time on it. And we will just sort of like finish it off with a little bit of Brie Wax, uh, dark wood wax as well. I think I chose antique, well, what was it? Georgian mahogany, I believe I used for that. So there's the hat done, and now we will put on the uh, wax now you can sort of paint it if you want i'm not sure if you've got paints do that if you want um to do that that's cool if you just want to leave it natural that's cool so what i'm doing there is i'm just sanding back the wood dye after it's dried off and so that just brings out some highlights on that material and we are just putting on the wood wax there and just liberally put that on and then i will wipe it off And I'm just buffing it up with a nylon buffing wheel. Well, I mean, I'm not sure, sure if it's a buffing wheel, but it came with the Dremel kit, so I didn't buy it. It was just in there, and I thought it would work quite nicely with this. Nice thing about buffing is it's not sort of, it's kind of like natural. It's not like a varnish finish, if you get what I mean. 